G.I. Joe classified troop building steel core figures. We have a male figure and a female figure. A uh, couple things I'm going to point out with the artwork here whenever we get in the first person look. But uh, you have the nice splash reminiscent of the movie here with the Statue of Liberty. And then you have trouble bubbles here in the background. Uh, on the back, you have all of the accessories and everything that the figures come with. These come with a ton of accessories, all kinds of stuff. Jet packs, blast effects. Uh, all of the weapons pack is actually from the uh, Viper 3-pack of figures, the 3-pack of Cobra Vipers. And um, in the true to the original figure style, these are almost completely made up of existing figure parts. Um, and then you have the body armor and you have the new sculpt heads. These figures actually come with a total of four heads, two that are on the figures and then two additional heads that are a more updated look to the, um, the steel, the steel brigade. That's what these figures uh, originally were steel brigade, but uh, they let the trademark lapse, and that got snatched up by Valiverse. And Valiverse actually released Steel Brigade figures before Hasbro did. Now, we are going to do um, a video for those figures as well as these. And then we'll do another video that is a comparison, a uh, who did it better type of video. And lots of stuff that I've seen said about these figures um, things that I've seen posted and whatnot that just, uh, seem wildly inaccurate. And, um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories they come with and the figures themselves. I understand that it's probably supposed to signify movement, uh, seeing as how they are in the jet packs, but the images of the figures are a little bit blurry on the cover art, but then you have the actual, like, illustrated artwork over here you have the breakdown of accessories here trouble bubbles in the background and the statue of liberty on the obverse side we have height measurements here and here now we have these emblems down here with no way to actually uh, go check what the skills mean because the website is now defunct and has been for a while. No one's kept it up or anything. Uh, you've got the uh, highlights from the web gear, body armor, plate carriers, whatever. Uh, the insignia, the steel core insignia here. And just another uh, magnification of one of the uh, features on the body armor for the male figure. Now we take a look at the accessories. We have two identical jet packs. These are the same uh, for the male figure and the female figure. These will actually go with any G.I. Joe figure. These have been 3D printed for quite some time. Now we have an official production Hasbro piece. Here, let's get a close up look at the alternate head. This is a more updated version of the steel core head. I like these because I'm a fan of the update type stuff for these figures you have the male head and the female head the female head is slightly smaller I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a size comparison here uh, the female head slightly smaller than the male head and of course on the inside you're going to have sockets of different sizes you'll have the socket for the male body and the socket for the female body looks like we come with one suppressor same loadout as the Viper 3-pack. They've reused all of these weapons. And again, this is along the lines of the original Steel Brigade figure. Uh, the Steel Brigade figure utilized uh, recolored parts. Here is a um, uh, one of the four main variants of the Steel Brigade figure. Um, they actually came with a patch which looks like this logo and a customized file card to make this figure yourself um you picked all of the specialties and all of the information about the character and gave him like your own uh your own uh, custom file name and code name but uh here's an example of one of those figures and this figure would have came with a rifle i do not have the accessories to this one but I don't have the file card or the patch or any of that stuff. Um, including the patch, I think was really neat because that, as a matter of fact, when I was a kid and I got my uh, my first uh, mail-away Steel Brigade figure, I had the 
patch, uh, my grandmother actually sewed that onto a denim jacket for me. And uh, I wore that patch proudly. But uh, through the rest of the accessories, we have the blast effects for the jetpack. And one of the things that I want to show you here, this, uh, this post is actually a separate piece. It spins inside there. I'm not sure why they did that, but it just plugs in right here. And then you see that it freely spins. It's kind of an odd little tidbit of information. And then of course you have, um, again, the same, uh, one of the same blast effects from the Viper three pack for the, the, uh, for the machine guns, you have the smoke effect, you have the, uh, another blast effect, another like spray and pray effect over here. You have the removable magazines that are all the same for all three of these rifles. And you also have the pistols that are again, the same that came with the Vipers. You also have two knives here. And if we look at the figures, I like the fact they've inverted this and had it placed in the correct position for the way that a knife would be drawn. Now, I know the male figure looks a little bit wonky. Some people say that he's shorter, shorter than other uh, G.I. Joe classified figures, but I assure you that he is not. This is actually um, the upper torso like from here up is beachhead or um, the cover island firefly and I'm pretty sure that this is breaker from there down like the entirety the entire lower body is breaker but what makes him look so big and bulky is the fact that he has these armor pieces on his uh, shoulders which make him look a lot wider well when you make a figure wider but not taller it's going to look like it's shorter uh, this is the same size as, um, I believe, the Cobra Island Firefly figure. And then you have the head with plenty of articulation to look around. The head's not loose, but it's not so tight that it's going to um, not be posable. You can actually look up, which is a, a pretty cool feature in, to me, at least. And if we pop this head off, get under the chin there, you see it's got that nice uh, fat peg that ball joint there. We'll grab the other male head and we'll give a little bit of a comparison here. You can see that this is derived from this, but this is more uh, stylized to the original Steel Brigade figure. Now they are releasing helmets with uh, some of the other figures. The Steel Brigade helmets themselves uh, like with Grunt, Grunt comes with a Steel Brigade helmet. Clutch is going to come with a Steel Brigade helmet. I notice that the articulation in this is slightly less than it is with the original stylized helmet or the original stylized head. Uh, it doesn't set up any taller or anything, I don't think. But this this figure is not shorter than uh, than any of the others. It just looks weird because of the bulky... Uh, armor that he's wearing but we get him geared up and that knife in there these figures are going to of course be displayed loose in clamshell cases i'm probably going to display four of them like that two with the original style helmets and two with the updated look to them Let's see if he has any other storage components here. I don't see anything else. Just the knife sheath and the thigh holster there. So we'll leave him at that. I did notice one thing here with his hand. It's in a more down position. And I could not get that articulated up very well. I'm not sure if there's a mold issue going on there or what. But I'm not going to force it. I don't think there's a problem. I think it probably just needs to be heated up and um, moved into position. But anyway, there there's the basic gist of the uh, the male figure being comprised of existing parts. So now the female figure, 
Uh, if you notice, her helmet has quite a bit of movement here. She is the movie Scarlet upper body and Lady J's lower body. The entirety of Lady J's lower body. Another thing that I'll point out with her is that she's pinless. Uh, all of her joints, uh, at least as far as I can see, are pinless. You don't have these pins poking out here uh, in the knees. So I'm glad they used that. The one thing that I don't like is that they should have uh, they should have used different female arms. They should have used Lady J's arms if need be, just so that we had that nice double jointed elbow instead of the uh, the single jointed elbow. I don't like the single jointed elbow nearly as much as I do the double. I think they could have done a better job there with that. Geared up though, she has the same uh, sheath and she has the holster, the drop leg holster over here, the thigh holster for the pistol to go into. And I don't believe she has any other storage on her gear for anything else. But we'll take one of the jet packs and go ahead and push that post into her back. Jetpack fits nicely and add a couple of the blast effects. And these are all made with the, uh, the softer plastic material. Don't really have to worry about breaking anything. I don't guess there she is geared up and it looks good. I mean, you could totally put this figure into a, uh, a flight stance and have uh, an armature holding the figure or suspend the figure from the, uh, from your ceiling and make it look like she's, uh, she's flying. And the same thing with the male figure. We'll pop that off her and put it onto him. Now, it's a lot better fit on him than what it is on her. Uh, the, the backpack post actually goes in all the way on the male figure. And I think it looks a lot better than what it does on the female figure. Uh, her socket back here is pretty, uh, pretty tight. It's not as deep as what it is on the male figure. So that's, that's not going all the way in. Now, that may differ with uh, another figure, but this is straight out of the box for me. It doesn't fit flush, and I, I would like that if it did. And again, the same thing I did with the male figure. I'm going to pop that head off and put the alternate head on. So the price point on these figures is $55 for the set. I think that's a pretty damn good deal, uh, considering that all your basic Joes go for $25 a piece now. Um, you're looking at $25 per figure, and then for the uh, for the jetpack sets, you're paying 5 bucks. So $55 retail on these figures. Uh, that's, in my opinion, that's a good price. If we're going by the uh, the twenty five dollars per figure, you know two fifty a piece for the jet pack, and the jet packs, and uh, the blast effects for the jet packs. It's just they're priced right, in my opinion. There's a lot of uh, a lot of people out there that were heavily complaining about anything they could find uh, to complain about with the the steel core figures, but. Man, I just, I really don't have any complaints at all about these, except for maybe the artwork on the box. The soft accessories don't bother me that much. Um, you know, you can heat these up and straighten them out. Shouldn't have to do that, in my opinion, but I guess you stand less a chance of, uh, of breakage with any of them. Let's get these magazines loaded up here. Like so. And judging by the size of the magazine, uh, it seems as though these these guns would be chambered in a uh, something like a 7.62 NATO. Since we've gone with a, a more realistic, a realistically styled weapon here, these would be uh, more 7.62 NATO 308 style, just because of the size of the magazine. In my opinion. And you do have the uh, the ports for the blast effects. I'm just picking up random stuff and shoving it in here. I don't know what goes where, but 
this would probably be a better fit. Uh, don't have much of a post on there, but probably a better fit. And then you can actually, this will accommodate two blast effects here. Something of the such. The same with this one. You've got the port in the end of the barrel, port in the end of the barrel. Don't think that we really have any other ports. Now, these will also fit, uh, not that you would really want this displayed like that, but they'll also fit the uh, the ports in the uh, the jetpacks. That <laughs> looks kind of weird to me. There they are in clamshell cases, packed up for display on the wall. Display very nicely. I like these figures quite a bit. They're great troop builders. Look around. Give a quick look around the rest of the room for the moment. Current configuration. I'm actually about to thin out a whole bunch of uh, stuff from that wall there. Probably not going to thin out anything from this one, but I got to have some sales because as you can see, I'm pretty much out of space. It's quite unfortunate. And I want to stick to the, uh, the classified line as well as the Super 7 figures here, the 7-inch Super 7 figures and keep displaying like this in the clamshell cases. Probably won't get any, get rid of any of the uh, the vintage figures. Right here, my favorite vintage Cobra figure, Crystal Ball. There's several reasons why he's my favorite, but we really need a Crystal Ball in the classified line. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. Check out the description for links to all kinds of useful things. Uh, Facebook groups, Amazon uh, sales, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, um, I'll be back at you with more soon. Uh, again, thanks for watching the Island Viper.